right, so here we are. We're uh, trying to get to the airport. Uh, we just uh, experienced another nor'easter. Got kind of snowed in here, battling the elements. It's a trial, just trying to get to the airport to try and get to the event. So we're That's doing right. our best. Hope to see everyone in South Carolina tomorrow. Yeah, where it's going to be actually warmer than it is here. So, all right. We got our tickets, we got our licenses. There's a whole story there, more on that in a little bit. But uh, fingers crossed, get out of this snow zone here and get to the airport. Right on. Hey everybody, Mac and Damer here for OCR Kings. Uh, right now we're going to talk about basically how to fly for an OCR and what we kind of learned. This is our, our first, first trip our going first, to uh, yeah. Spartanburg, yeah. a successful one, um, yeah. with the exception of the hotel, which was <laughs> a which, which was an obstacle Shit, to yeah, survive <laughs> on its own. Uh, some things to think about, we'll talk about, you know, resupply, picking up items that you either didn't pack, intentionally or otherwise, um, f f dealing with uh, mud, uh, dealing with yeah, wet clothes, to clean up. how to get there and how to get back. Um, we did uh, Expedia and we tried yep. to do an all-inclusive deal and we thought hey great we got a hotel and oh three stars <laughs> it was great on paper okay and it all worked out but the hotel was a really filthy disgusting dive yeah. um the flights were okay yep. uh, try to, to at least this is what i would recommend try to fly non-stop i mean that's <laughs> self-evident but i mean i mean we we didn't check bags anyways, no. so it was what can we push through security just to, just to avoid that process. Right. And I guess if you had to do a layover somewhere, that would just make it even worse because right. I would be nervous as hell. Right. I was like, is my GoPro, is my gear, is this, is that? So right. If you don't have, you know, electronic equipment or something very, very sentimental that you would be deathly <laughs> afraid of losing, you could check a bag. Yeah. But, you know, when you're doing a race, you're also under a time constraint, you know, Say you land and you get your stuff all situated on a Friday night, but your race is six o'clock in the morning on Saturday. Shit, I'm in South Carolina and my luggage is in Nome in Alaska somewhere. So definitely recommend uh, carrying your luggage with you. Uh, or at least carry, carry what on. you're going to race in. Right. And have, have that at least your carry that. On. And then if you have the extra stuff where you're at, wherever you're going to be for a couple of days. Or and, and going straight through. Now, as far as security is concerned, you know, we didn't know what would go through. We weren't even sure if, like, our supplements and our gels would go through. We had some really good feedback and comments out there from uh, friends of ours on YouTube who said, yes, you can bring X, Y, and Z. This guy, of course, uh, Mr. America over here, had no problem getting, <laughs> getting through security. Uh, I did get stopped, and logically so, okay? Um, First and foremost, how did I pack my stuff? Maybe you packed yours differently. I got one of these fantastic, who's this by? Orange mud bags. I mean, yeah, thing is just a, just a big old waterproof pretty huge. bag. Going down, I had my running shoes, my boots in this thing, because they're, they're filthy. That was at the bottom of my bag. I had, you know, my OCR gear on top, I had my change of clothes off to the side, you know, skivvy, socks, clean stuff, great. But on the very, very top, I had each in a gallon Ziploc bag, toiletries, okay, pretty sane, no big deal. I had my tech stuff, which I'll get back to in a second, 
and I also had all of my chow that was in another one. Well, I got stopped. And it was a good thing I had everything arranged because at least in my tech bag, and I think that's what did it, I had just one cable, that was for my iPhone, but I had a headlamp, I had two watches. I mean, two watches, somebody's like, who's this guy building bombs? You know, I would have stopped me, so I had no problem. And the folks at LaGuardia were professional and cool, and they, it wasn't a horror show, like, oh, it was body cavity search. But in retrospect, I think the watches shouldn't have been in here with all this other crap. I also had four GoPro batteries, yeah. which I put in one of these so that they, they wouldn't be floating around. If they had to look, they could see them. They're branded with the GoPro label right on them. They also went in my race belt so they would be waterproof. Um, I had the GoPro, the head strap. I had a lot of crap in this stuff, so I would have stopped me too. Furthermore, in another Ziploc bag, all of my chow, I had these two giant ostrom, ostrom, I'm not sure how to pronounce their name. Free plug to them. We're not getting paid for any of this, by the way, full disclosure. Though we'd like to. Um, I had these two giant beef and elk sticks. I'm sure they looked like dynamite. I'm sure they looked like, 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 like explosives. So. In uh, that bag with the chow, I had four gels, which I also put in here in one of these because I was going to have that waterproof in my race belt and I had six packets of mustard also in its own separate thing so if they looked in there they'd be like what the, who, yeah. what is wrong with what you is all that garbage also <laughs> if the gels weren't allowed to go because it meant it meant too many ounces of liquid I just would have eaten them right there they're caffeinated I would have been <laughs> flying without the plane so that was the only thing that um, gave anyone pause and I believe it was the watches because on the way back I had one watch on my wrist which I put in a bin along with my belt and my phone and all of that stuff and I had the other watch loose in a pocket which I put in another bin with my metal I didn't put the metal in the bag or the display for the trifecta which I bought at the merch tent I would recommend those metallic items also go in a bin not in your bag to go through That's the right. x-ray because I think you'll blind the guy that's going to light up. It's like, what the it's like opening the Ark of the Covenant. The guy's melting. <laughs> so put your gear, if you're going to put it in carry-on luggage, at the top and just have it ready to go centralized so if you have to pull it out or the person inspecting your luggage has to, it wants to pull it out and inspect it, it's ready to go and not loose all over the damn place. Yep, mine was done the exact same way, all separated. Didn't have those giant beef sticks. They, right. they just <laughs> or, like the, or the gels. <laughs> right. So like, go ahead. <laughs> now on the way back, the wet boots went right back in this bag. Yeah. Perfect. Ooh, orange mud. Okay, plug for them. They're not paying us. They, these are pretty yeah. cool. This is just a giant one of these, which we went to Walmart and bought, which we'll be getting back to in a second. Well, those it, those orange that orange mud bag. Wasn't, is wasn't awesome. Right. It's just a little too small. Wasn't so big enough for all the wet, filthy crap. Probably should have had a second one because it was like boots and like one thing. But I mean, everything was just caked in mud, especially from that South Carolina. That race orange that we stuff, did. man, was, so it was everywhere. Like pack, it was like it just everything just went into the bag to deal with it at home. So we bought a whole bunch of these yeah. to supplement our uh, plastic containers, our bags, put our wet crap in which included you know, things you might not think of, your camelback, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. If you took a hat off and you had it somewhere, that was all wet and filthy. Those went in here. Just didn't want to smell that stuff. Filth. Anyway, so it was If you don't care about your bag or your pack or whatever, by all means, shove it right in there. You don't need any of this stuff, okay? <laughs> this is just a nice to have so you don't stink up your stuff. If you don't okay. care about your clothes or the hotel room, right. just throw, right. it all, throw it all away right there. You can put all of your stuff in one of these, and it might suffocate to death the bed bugs that you might be carrying <laughs> from your Roach Motel. <laughs> right. uh -huh. Now, talking about Walmart, this guy is very, very smart. He, he did not want to carry gels. He doesn't typically eat them, but if we were stopped and I didn't have any of those things or I needed, you know, nutrition, something else that I wasn't allowed to carry. It's good to have a resupply point. Go on your phone, go on Google Maps or whatever and figure out what's the closest place to get what you need what to you get. Want. Yep, we had it all planned out where it was leave airport, 
He's like, right. we're going to drive right past a Walmart, so let's stop and get what we need. I mean, one of the things that I was considering was uh, it's a rental car, and yeah, I didn't bring a towel down with me just post-race. It was like, it doesn't matter how well you wash off or not, you're still kind of a mess. That, so was, that was, was like, a great idea. Let's stop at Walmart and buy, it was a, like a $2. It was $2.47 a piece. So <laughs> For a towel? For the first go-around, we spent 5 bucks in towels, okay? Yep. Non-essential, but if you, like you said, if you don't want to destroy your rental car, or if the hotel that you're staying in, yes. you go to take the towel off the rack and it's got poopy stains <laughs> on it, I'm going with the $2.47 the towel. The towels that we bought for two dollars and forty-seven cents, we're superior to the left at the hotel. Issue. Were yeah. actual upgrades yeah. to the hotel, even so. when they were caked full of mud and they filth. Can, they they were thank, still better. They can thank us. So, uh, one other thing that I didn't want to fly with, I heard that you could. I didn't want to take a chance. Were chem lights. If you do a beast or an ultra, you're advised that you need to have a headlamp. I did fly with a headlamp, uh, but I didn't fly with chem lights, the glow sticks, whatever you want to call them. So, for a dollar a piece, I can't believe they still work. Barely, yeah. uh, we got, or I did, I, t I picked up two of these, okay? Um, totally expendable, yes. didn't want to fly with them, and didn't need to. In the end, we found them at Walmart. Yep, and wouldn't ever expect to even have to use them, but I guess the idea of like rolling an ankle or something yeah. happens and I still want to finish the damn race. Right. This guy was battling, he is a stoic, I'll give you credit, don't let yeah. your head get too big. I should whisper <laughs> this in so you don't hear. <laughs> Hey, he's, he's rolling around on this, like, cracked chicken fried drumstick that he's got here. I know it's very it's painful. Uh, and we were, at least I was, prepared to walk. We're going to walk. No. All right? Nope. We, we did. We were moving. We were moving. It's so right. we were yeah. done way was, before we needed any headlamps or any of that stuff. It's like every once in a while, there would be, like, a spot where there was small, like, where they just chopped down little bush. Right. And I would just catch, catch yeah. my foot on that little root that was sticking out. Man, those are painful. But so you won't I'm, complain. So. That's right. Won't complain. I mean, we stopped at Walmart because our packs were empty, so we needed water. So we had to just buy some water. Right. It was like we tend to always celebrate, uh, get our beer at the end of the race. Couldn't believe it. And get it's some uh, usual. Like, yeah. It's amazing. We're they st still waiting for a sponsorship. <laughs> you could get at, at Walmart. It's not like that for us up here. You could get, you know, a 30 rack of beer, and you could get 30, 30, 30 rounds of 556. Five, I mean, all of <laughs> all 30 rack of ribs. All your shopping done in one spot. It was funny that we had a plan where it was like, what do we need once we get to South Carolina that we're not bringing with us? And it was like, towel, styrofoam cooler, right? ice. I and Guinness. Right. <laughs> it was like, and We got it all in one spot. It was amazing. Maybe something else. Right. So, uh, yeah, so a little bit of logistics kind of. Work that out beforehand. Work it out beforehand, and uh, it was smooth sailing. It was, it was a good time. And in fact, even not knowing, but that decent restaurant that was within walking, walking distance, distance of. Fats, the, I believe. Plug yeah, for you guys. Yeah, we had a good was, time there. Good Cook food and mean just steak. Just, Delicious. Yeah, just drinking beers after the race. Yeah, talking that to night. fellow racers. Yeah. Definitely so, fun. So within walking distance, that was awesome. So, what do you do? Make your plans, figure out your logistics, what you can't or are not going to carry, find a spot to resupply. Uh, really deep dive, research your hotel. <laughs> you don't yeah. trust the ratings out there. If you can book in a package, that I think is the way to go. Take some stress out of it. You know, get your car, don't shit up your car. Take the insurance, probably a good idea. We yeah. save some bucks in the thing. <laughs> All right, um, and uh, be flexible and have a good time. That, yeah. that, was, that was pretty cool. I would definitely, though, recommend something that we didn't think about until afterwards. It's additional Extra. plastic yeah. baggies. I wasn't going to fly with a black contractor bag. That's usually my favorite yeah. because between the bomb jerky yeah, sticks and <laughs> watches all over the place, they'd be like, what? You put bodies in those things. You see them go to the other security guards and it's the symbol. They're like, it's <laughs> <laughs> oh, you come to the ESU. I'm due. <laughs> so, um, you know, just uh, leave yourself enough time, carry on your luggage, and yeah. uh, do your thing, you know? Um, that's, I think, this is our game plan, and we're going to run it again. We trained hard. We had fun. We certainly did.
So, yep, now we just need the next destination. Yeah. Hmm. That's all right. We'll see what that is. <laughs> might be overseas. Mm. International <laughs> might be uh, a different story because uh, I don't know yeah. what they have in other locations. But it'll be something to think about, and we'll uh, report back to everybody what we find. So remember, as always, train hard and have fun. This is Damer and Mac for OCR Kings. We'll see you next time.